it is Saturday, and of course, for a lot of you guys in the UK, it's Saturday evening. It is party night. Why would you guys be in this live stream? Shouldn't you be at the clubs, man? Shouldn't you be doing it and doing it well? Uh, Tezrim, what is up? Chris Cox, Prince Alexander. So yeah, just have this little Servios thing playing in the background. Uh, actually, well, it's Electronauts. It's an Electronauts in Las Vegas or something like that where they were showing off Electronauts. So every once in a while, I will get a negative comment, a depressing comment, something that kind of brings me down. Sometimes I get these wonderful comments where people are like, oh, I love the show. This is an awesome show. Keep doing it. We like the show, blah, blah, blah. But every once in a while, I get a really negative comment and I could either like totally ignore it and, and pretend it didn't happen and just try to forget about it, or I can attack it head on. And I figure, why not attack it head on? And so here we are. Now, I was going to try to copy this comment and put it into some type of thing, but it's too wide. I can't really copy it right, but I'm going to read it to you guys really quick. So this is on episode 208, quick hit version of VR Game Rankings, which... Um, was just the other day. So here is the message. This is from Get Lost. Pretty freaking harsh here, but I can deal with it. Here's what he had to say. Hi, Anthony. I have been following your show since the beginning. You are one of my favorite VE channels on YouTube. Or you used to be. <laughs> Ouch, that is pretty freaking harsh right there. That is pretty harsh right there. Anyways, because I want to see you succeed among the bigs, here goes a little constructive criticism. Take a look at what your viewer numbers used to be on past shows from a few months ago, and you're going to see the average was about three to 5,000 viewers per show. Not exactly, bro. More like 1,000 to 3,000 views per show. But okay, it's all right. You want to round up to, to three to 5,000. That's fine. I'm all right there. And then he says, but now you're getting only 300 to 400 views per show or less. It is a huge climb down on viewers. As I said, I'm a fan of your shows. And that is why I still watch the damn thing. But frankly speaking, man, the lack of interesting topics in your shows combined with the annoying live stream is not working. So here comes a here comes some friendly advice. Go back to the old uh hold on, I got to click on this. Go back to the old format of VR game rankings. So yeah, ouch. Ouch. That is a sick burn there. And you know what? Hey, what Get Lost has to say is absolutely legit. It is true. Back in the days when I did the old uh, daily vlog, the, the typical daily vlog that uh, featured me, it, it wasn't this OBS thing. It wasn't a live stream with a chat window and I was doing stories and all of that. I was probably getting about like 1,000 views, 2,000 views, sometimes more per episode. Not, not necessarily right away, but within a couple of days, I was kind of getting that. And now it is true. Now I'm getting about 200, 300, 400 views on the live streams. And so, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it is a huge drop. No question about that. And, um, but you know, basically here's my thoughts on all of this. So my thoughts are who gives a fuck? Who really gives a fuck? That's my thought because the reality is this. If you're not getting 50,000 views every time you're doing a YouTube video, you're not making no damn money anyway. You're making peanuts. Those old shows that I did, that I got a thousand views or maybe two thousand views, big freaking deal, man. That's like two dollars or three dollars. So big whoop. So my thought process is those old shows took probably somewhere between like six and twelve hours of my time 
to bang out those old shows. Now, should they take that long? Maybe not. Maybe if I was much better at what I'm doing, maybe I could do it in four hours instead of six. You know, uh, instead of six to twelve hours, maybe it'd be four to four to seven hours or something. Or maybe I, I could be a lot better with that. But it took too much time. And the views, 1,000 to 3,000 views, that's nothing. Now, if I was getting 50,000 views, sure, I would go back to that. But if you ain't getting 50,000 views, you're not really making money on YouTube. I hate to break it to you, but do the freaking math. If I released a video every single day that got 50,000 views every single day, I wouldn't be able to pay my freaking mortgage off. I wouldn't be able to live off that. No way. You you need even more than that. I think you need, honestly, I, I, I read somewhere that if you wanted to make $5,000 a month on YouTube, you need like 200,000 views a day. 200,000 views a day to make 5,000 a month off YouTube. So the dream of like making a career out of YouTube is you're talking fractions of a fraction of a fraction. But yeah, so what's going on here? This is called Iron Ascension. We do see this gigantic thing. It almost looks like Stormland robot arms, so that's kind of cool. So is this like Shadow of the Colossus or something? Are you trying to climb a giant beast and try to stop it before it wrecks havoc? Not sure. Or are you the giant beast? Hmm. Let's check it out. Trolleygon Studio. So once again, let's talk about those developer names. Trolleygon Studios. So Trolleygon Studios versus Disruptive Penguin. What is your take? No, but yeah, these these studio names just uh, kind of crazy here. Trolleygon Studios. This is called Iron Ascension, and this trailer doesn't really show us a whole hell of a lot. Um, I'm not sure. Am I this robot guy, and it's kind of Shadow of the Colossus? Do I control this gigantic machine? Am I about to destroy that little hut that's right there, or is that where the robot lives, and he's going to try to stop this? You see the shadow of this gigantic ass machine that is going to wreak havoc, and it looks like it's a farmer as well. Um, so not a lot to go, not a lot to go on here. Trolleygon Studios. This is coming soon to Steam Early Access for the Vive and the Rift. So we'll have to keep our eyes on it. Alrighty. So this is Home Sweet Home, which I guess this is available on Steam and has been available on Steam for. Um, let's see, I've not seen the Vive or the Rift. It's not even talking about VR. Hmm, I wonder if this is the only VR version, but basically the way I understand this, folks, is this is coming to PlayStation VR, but, but, get this, it is a GameStop exclusive. So, a physical version of this at GameStop or something? is kind of what I heard about this. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure, I'm guessing it would be available on PSN, like what game isn't available on PSN. But I think this is coming in October. Um, I believe this is coming in October. Let me turn down the volume a little bit here. Let me bounce over to the webby browser. So yeah, this is the Steam page for it. It is Home Sweet Home VR Now Available. So it does say VR Now Available, very positive on these reviews, but you go down here, it doesn't say anything about Vive or Rift, but it does say VR now available. There is a demo, so I'm not sure if this Steam demo will work, but this is coming to PlayStation VR. That's what this trailer was all about here, and I believe it's coming around October or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it does look like a pretty cool horror game. Let's face it, when it comes to horror games, we got them coming out of our ears. There is pretty much nonstop horror games, but it they're done so well. They're just done so well. So people are going to keep making these horror games when they're done so well. I was trying to find out. Okay, so Home Sweet Home um, is coming to PlayStation VR this fall. It's also going to be available for PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. 
and the home sweet home PlayStation VR port will release October 9th. Okay, so it currently is on Steam with optional VR support. Not sure if we can actually try the demo or not, but yeah, Art Hands VR has a story on this. I saw this on Art Hands VR. Art Hands VR, by the way, those of you that like indie VR gaming sites, which VR Game Rankings is very much an indie VR gaming website, but if you like spunky little indie websites like that, definitely peep out Art Hands VR. And I'll show you, this is Art Hands VR right here. If you've never heard of it, like this guy, Art Hands, he's on the Vive subreddit, the Oculus subreddit, I think the PlayStation VR subreddit. And, you know, he always updates stuff on his website. It's kind of a little bit basic here, just, you know, pretty much the basic facts. But if you want to find out, like, just every little update and everything, pretty good site, <clears throat> pretty good website to check out. So a little bit of love there to Art Hands. This is actually one of the more tedious parts of, uh, of transference when you're grabbing that doorbell thing and taking it to the other door. But this house, man, I've been in this house so much. I've seen these walls. I've seen these doors so many times. I've been to it in the different time periods. And I keep going through this thing. And I don't know what I need to do at this point. Um, something about find the crystals. So there must be like one more crystal I have to find. But I swear, oh, you know where I'm stuck at in this game. I can actually tell you guys where I am stuck in transference. So minor, minor, minor spoilers, but the bottom line here is it's not really gonna be a spoiler if you haven't gotten to this part yet. So it's not. It's only really a spoiler for somebody that's already been there. So not really a spoiler at all. So where I am in transference is there's this one living room room that you get inside to later in the game and it says, um, a, a missing file, like one of the digital files that is missing is living room slash alarm clock or so I, I believe it's living room slash alarm clock. And I've gone to the other <laughs> muted, not played it yet. Paul Smith. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's super minor spoiler, super minor spoiler here. It's just where I happen to be stuck late in the game. You'll forget about it. Don't worry about it. Um, but basically I got to find this like alarm clock thing somewhere. And usually what you do is you go back to the other time period, you find the alarm clock or the, the wall clock or whatever it is, you grab it, you hold on to it, you switch the light, which sends you to the other time period, back to the other time period. And then you take that item to the room that you're supposed to take it to, you put it in the right spot, and then, you know, things start moving around and, and <laughs> you know, it starts going, and all the little digital things start happening. And then you get to advance beyond that point. You know, you get to get a little bit further. And that's kind of where I'm stuck, which I believe has to be pretty darn close to the end because I swear I've already been at least three hours in transference. Um, I do kind of take my sweet time and I don't always solve these puzzles right away. And I don't immediately go to YouTube. I don't go to the walkthroughs until I really feel like there's no other option. But I'm still loving this game. I, I think it's well worth 25 bucks. Now, I mean, really, the real question, honestly, is if I only had 30 bucks in my Steam account and I could only buy Transference or Windlands 2, what would I do? Ugh, that is a hard one, man. Do I buy Transference or do I buy Windlands 2 if I can only buy one of them? Wow, that is a difficult decision, ladies and gentlemen. I think I would go with, uh, I think I go with Winlands too, but I would be missing out on brief, brief glimpses of a real deal AAA VR production because that's what transference is. Brief glimpses of a high end VR production. It's horror, it's thriller. It's going to scare the crap out of you in certain moments, which limits it. It limits its, uh, you know, appeal to widespread appeal. But man, I 
think I got to go Windlands 2 just because I love that world of Windlands 2. I love exploring that world of Windlands 2. But it is a tough, it's a real tough decision between these two. And remember, guys, remember Apollo Creed. <laughs> Apollo Creed is a few day or Creed, basically Creed Rise to Glory is a couple of days away. So I don't know, it looks kind of fun. I mean, I, I, I think this looks fun. It looks colorful. I, I like the shell, the cell shading. Look at Evergreen Street, um, you know, very colorful. It's gonna be on Steam. It's gonna be on Oculus Store as well, it looks like, Super Hockey Ball. Uh, don't know that much about it. This is basically what we have is this trailer right here. Um, definitely on the very indie side of the coin and it's really going to come down to playability and feel you could get a game like this and if it feels really good and assuming they keep the price in a decent kind of a range this could be a fun game you know this could absolutely be a fun game so it's called super hockey ball but it's more of like a street hockey thing not like real hockey and a much bigger ball and probably a lot of little mini games, you know, hitting targets, going through the gates. Uh, hopefully, price is relatively low here. Um, I think it would probably behoove this developer to keep this like fourteen ninety nine or less would be my guess. Just, just purely looking at this trailer and not knowing really anything at all about it, I would say stay under that $15 mark if you could. One last little trailer I can throw on real quick is, now I don't know much about this, but this looks really cool. This is some type of animation type thing that was done in Quill. And I don't know if we can actually experience this because this looks super cool. Let's watch this video a little bit. Just, I'll full screen it for a minute here. but I really like the visual style here. I wanna see this in VR, in my headset. I think it would be really cool. A nice, surreal looking world made from Quill. So yeah, that does look super cool. I don't know how we actually get that or experience that, but I did see they're talking about this on the uh, they're talking about this on the Oculus subreddit. It's actually the number one upvoted thing. Um, the number one reply says, "Yeah, that is beep sick. Very 80s cyberpunk feel to it." The next guy says, holy shit, this is beautiful. I've never opened Quill and this single-handedly just made me start looking up tutorials. Can't wait to try it when I get home. So I guess if we have Quill, can we just find this and see this? Uh, we can see this in our headsets on the Oculus Rift if we have Quill, because I want to check this out. I believe I do have Quill. It's somewhere. Um, I might have to like re-download it or something but I'm pretty sure I got Quill at some point, somehow, maybe, I don't know. But I would like to check that out. That does look pretty. So anyway, guys, I will see everybody tomorrow. Once again, obviously, check out the website when you get an opportunity. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, all those good things. I'm going to keep banging this show out despite the comments of Get Lost, despite the fact I'm not getting all the views. It is all good. I'm going to keep banging this thing out, and I will see you guys tomorrow right after the VR Roundtable live stream. See you guys then. Take it easy. Later.